enlargement of the thyroid gland, right? But goiters may be further subdivided into different forms depending on several parameters. One, yung form, kung yan pa ay diffusely enlarged or nodularly enlarged. Function, kung siya ba ay hyperfunctioning o hypofunctioning. And pathology, ito ba ay benign or malignan. So kapag ka pinagsama-sama natin yung three categories na yon, you have in the form of form, diffuse goiter versus nodular goiter. When you talk about function, the number of thyroid <coughs> hormones, pwedeng kulang siya sa thyroid hormone, tama lang ang thyroid hormone, or sobra sa thyroid hormone, in which case we call it hyper. And pathology can either be, pwede ba itong benign, hindi cancerous, or malignan, in which case it is thyroid cancer. So if we put all of these in one table, this is what we will have. You can either have a diffuse, benign, hypothyroid patient, a diffuse, hyperthyroid, benign patient, or you can have a nodular, hypothyroid, malignant patient, or a nodular, hyperthyroid, benign patient. Lahat na mga ito ang pwedeng sabihin goiter. So hindi lang po siya iisa. Kaya pag nagpakonsult ang isang pasyente sa doktor, hindi pwedeng sabihin ng app, ah, simpleng goiter lang yan. Because it's never simple. You have to look at all of these considerations. And what is a nodule? Just for the purposes of illustration, this is how a nodule looks like. If this is your thyroid, this is how a nodule will look like. Hindi siya nakahiwalay sa thyroid. That particular nodule is a mass that grew within the thyroid. And this is also a goiter. But we call it a nodular goiter. Yung kanina nakita nyo lumaki ng buo, ang tawag namin doon, diffuse goiter. But if it is just a nodule, it's a nodular goiter. Okay? So how do we detect it? Just for the information of everyone, doctors usually follow three things when, we, when a patient comes to the clinic with goiter. We talk to you. We ask you certain things. We examine you, particularly examine your neck. And we order certain tests. That is the usual thing that we do. Now, what things do we ask a patient whenever the patient comes to the clinic with goiter? These are the things that we ask as part of the history. Do you have a swelling in your neck? Para bang sinasakal? Is it found on ultrasound? Or nagpa-x-ray ka, nasabi doon sa x-ray, may kaunting nakikitang pag-deviate dyan sa leeg mo. Local compression, para ka bang nahihirapang lumunok? Meron bang parang nakabara dyan sa bahagi ng iyong leeg? Pain, sumasakit ba? Lalo na kapag ka iyong kinaka pa o kapag lumulunok ka. Signs and symptoms like, ikaw ba'y namamayat? Sobrang pagpawisan. O kaya ikaw ba'y tumataba at mabagal kumilos? Thyroid cancer, particularly in the family. Does your father or mother have thyroid cancer? So that increases your risk of developing a thyroid cancer as well. These are just some of the things that we ask a patient whenever they come to us and present with a goiter. Then we do the physical exam findings and we center our physical examination on the neck. This is the size of the normal thyroid in the outline and what you can see is that the thyroid of this patient is definitely larger than the usual thyroid gland. So ang tawag natin dyan, goiter. And because you do not see any nodule, it is diffusely enlarged, we call it a diffuse goiter. How do you differentiate a diffuse goiter from a nodular goiter? Ito na yon. This is a diffuse goiter. This is a uninodular goiter dahil isa lang ang nodule pero pwedeng ang dami. In which case, we call it a multinodular goiter. So sa Pilipinas, nung ginawa namin yung prevalence survey in 2008, this is what we found. That among Filipino adults in 2008, 8.9% 8 had goiter 
and if we are to divide it between diffuse goiter and nodular goiter, we found that 56% of Filipinos with goiter have diffuse goiter and around 44% have nodular goiter. Okay? So, halos half-half. 56 versus 44. Konting-konti lang, no? Diffuse versus nodular. And we find this by palpating your neck. So, ito yung mga pagkakataon na ang doktor hahawakan ng leeg ng pasyente and we either do it standing in front of the patient but more appropriately at mas magandang makakapa yung leeg if we stand behind the patient. Dahil yung aming mga daliri ang aming ginagamit para kapain yung thyroid ng pasyente. So normally, we stand up, we, we go to your back, or your, we, we go behind you, and then we put our fingers here at the portion where your thyroid gland is supposed to be, and we now move our fingers to feel your thyroid. If it is large, if it has nodules, and if we feel any pain at all when we feel your thyroid. So, ang isang babae, maaring ganito. May malaki siyang thyroid. Kitang-kita, kahit hindi na namin kapain yan eh. Tinititan pa lang namin ng leeg ng pasyente, kitang-kita na rito, malaki ang kanyang thyroid, may goiter siya. Pwede rin na kahit hindi kapain, nagpakita pa lang, pumasok pa lang sa klinik ng doktor, halatang-halata. Meron na siya kagad malaking thyroid nodule dito sa kanyang leeg. So, we don't need to feel the neck sometimes. Minsan, pagpasok mo pa lang, parang nagsisisigaw na yung iyong leeg. Ito, natitito na po ang sakit ko. Okay? Sumisigaw na siya sa doktor without us even feeling the neck of that particular patient. So, after we do the history and ask you about the symptoms, after we feel your neck, that's the time we order for tests. At dito ngayon, nagkakatalo. Ano ba ang resulta mo para sabihin ikaw ay merong hyper o hypo? Ayan. Isa pa itong importanteng tinatanong ng mga pasyente. So the test that we do will include blood tests like TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. We might also request for an ultrasound to find out kung yung nakakapa namin ay talagang nga bang naroon. O baka mamaya, ang nakakapa ko lang, isa, pero yun pala, magkadikit yun, dalawa pala sa ultrasound. And, if needed, we ask for a biopsy. The fine needle aspiration biopsy, especially if we are entertaining possible malignancy or cancer. Just to review, a simple concept, ano ba ang TSH at bakit in-order to nito? Ang TSH is the hormone that is produced in the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is inside our brain. It is actually behind our eyes, as you can see here in the illustration, and it secretes that important hormone, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. What does it do? It stimulates your thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. So kapag ikaw ay sufficient ang iodine sa pagkain, Pagka sinabi ni TSH galing sa utak na, Oy, thyroid, gumawa ka na ng T4, T3, your thyroid will now produce enough T4 and T3 to give you enough supply. So, the TSH is the main driver for the formation of T4 and T3. And you can diagnose a patient as having abnormality depending on the level of the TSH. If the TSH of the patient is low, anong ibig sabihin nun? Si TSH low. So, ibig sabihin, sabi ng thyroid, marami na akong ginagawang T4, T3. Matulog ka muna dyan, TSH. Babagsak si TSH dahil sa sobrang dami ng T4, T3. And we call it hyperthyroidism. Kapag naman kulang ang ginagawang T4, T3 ng thyroid, sasabihin ng, ng pituitary, oy, ano bang nangyayari sa iyo? Bakit hindi ka gumagawa? So, ipobombard niya ngayon si thyroid ng napakaraming TSH. Kaya pag mataas ang TSH, ang tawag namin doon, hypothyroidism. 
looking at it from another perspective, looking at the thyroid hormones itself, if your thyroid gland is overproducing thyroid hormones, we call it hyperthyroidism. If it is underproducing thyroid hormones, we call it we call it hypothyroidism. Okay? Simple lang, na? And therefore, just to give you a, an overview of what doctors look at when you give them the results of your TSH, T4, T3, when we see that T4 and T3 are both elevated, meaning sobra ang dami ng ginagawang thyroid hormone, at kulang si TSH, ang tawag namin doon, hyperthyroidism. Kapag naman kulang ang ginagawang T4 and T3 ng thyroid, at dahil doon, sobrang taas ang TSH, ang tawag namin, hypothyroidism. Sa Pilipinas, ilan kaya ang merong overt hyper at hypo based on our study? This is what I would like to share to everyone. We found out in our survey in 2008 that 0.61% of Filipino adults or roughly 6 out of every 1,000 Filipino adults have hyperthyroidism. So kung magbibilang ka ng 1,000 na katao sa isang kwarto, anin dyan, maaring may hyperthyroidism. On the other extreme, if you look at hypothyroidism, based on the survey, 0.41% or roughly 4 out of every 1,000 Filipinos have hypothyroidism. So kulang ang kanilang thyroid hormone sa kabila naman ito. So again, out of every 1,000 people in the room, 4 have lacking thyroid hormones. Pero ito ang mas mahalagang malaman eh. Ano pa ang nangyayari sa isang tao kapag siya ay may hyper at may hypo? This now becomes the most interesting part of our discussion. 